Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. State Senator Dr. Robin Titus here for the whole show on the all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hit the open road on a brand new Harley or win a bundle of cash during the $250,000 Harley Davidson giveaways at Carson Valley Inn. Thousands in weekly giveaways, plus multiple grand prize winners, including cash and seven brand new Harleys. Now at the Carson Valley Inn. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. It's one of the oldest scams in Vegas. Make them think one thing and pull off another. Meet Sam Brown, or as Republicans call him, Scam Brown. Brown created a special fundraising committee he said would be used to elect Republicans. But instead, Brown pocketed money for his own campaign. In fact, fewer than 2% went to helping other candidates. Sam Brown, can't trust him to be for you. Win Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Dr. Robin Titus. She is a state senator from District 17 and the Republican leader in the last session. Uh, pleasure to have you back. I want to ask you a medical question right off the top. Monkeypox. This has yeah. now come into the news. Again. Um, yes. Um, it is uh, uh, growing in, in uh, Africa and starting to pop up in Europe. Is this something Americans should be worried about and is this something we should be looking to be vaccinated for this year? Um, I would say no to be getting a vaccine for it. I think that monkeypox is highly contagious. We are seeing it all over the world and we know that, especially in places like Las Vegas, people come from all over the world in a moment, basically, and so potential exposure. Um, so far, monkeypox has been in a limited group of folks uh, with limited exposure. Um, and I think it's really not uh, fatal uh, and I think it will take care of itself with education. Uh, last year, um, certain doctors were advising uh, their patients that uh, COVID uh, in, uh, vaccinations were going to give you a headache, but they weren't really going to do much to protect you uh, with that particular round if you'd already been uh, vaccinated. Um, what do you think going into this season? The COVID, one of the, well, certainly I, I had my COVID vaccines when it was first out, but I haven't had the boosters because one of the things that COVID shocked us all with is how rapidly it mutates. Um, and along that line, then by the time the vaccines come out, it's already mutated so that, that the, what you're getting vaccinated for is no longer the one that you're gonna get infected with. Now, they, do they give you some overall immunity? It's a little bit like the flu vaccine, where we, what we've always done traditionally with the flu vaccine is see what's in the Southern Hemisphere in their winter, see what flus are out there, and then they mix up a batch of flu vaccine based on what we think is going to be the flu that year. And then sometimes we get it right, and sometimes it turns out to be a different strain. Um, but I would tell folks they have to do, talk to their own individual providers, because a global recommendation for any person is just not right. Healthcare is so individual, that you have to do what's right for you and based on your risk factors. And I would agree with you 100%, talk to your own uh, physician 
and, and take their advice. Um, all right, let's talk politics. Have you ever seen or imagined anything like what we have seen uh, in the last month? Sam, you and I have both been involved in politics a long time, um, li literally. Uh, I registered and voted when I was 18 years old, and uh, so it's been a long time ago. Stayed engaged the whole time. What has happened in the last several months has just been crazy roller coaster ride uh, from um, President Trump getting shot in the ear, who I, uh, he, he's my guy now. I mean, I tell you, he, I want to, who doesn't want to be on the Trump team when you have somebody like that, that that's tough, uh, that is that tough. So well, I would say Democrats. But well, that, but well I would tell you there were some Democrats, if you look at the economics of the situation, I think Democrats really ought to look at what we have uh, as Republicans to offer, what Trump has to offer for this nation. Having said that, however, uh, I don't think Biden and his family knew there was going to literally be a coup and a takeover and he was, and Kamala is going to be now the nominee, I think has changed. I tell folks, for me, uh, as a Senate minority leader, some Republican caucus leader, my job is to stay in my lane and keep us out of the super minority. Uh, I'm working hard for that. I can't control the national politics. My gosh, none of us can control what's going on. And so we in Nevada have to focus on what we can do for Nevada. And I, my, my mantra truly is staying out of that super minority. And so to that end, I'm working really hard to keep, get our Senate Republican candidates elected. And are you in constant conversation with the governor on this? You know, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't say constant conversation because there's a lot of things out there that the governor has to be engaged in. He knows we are all doing our job and working hard. The governor has been amazing about staying connected with the assembly and the Senate um, members and the candidates, and more than any governor has been uh, in my experience. Um, we were just meeting uh, every, on Thursday, so we meet every Thursday as a assembly members, co uh, uh, Senate members, the governor's chief of staff, the governor on, coming up with what the policies are, how are things going, and what's happening. And so that line of communication is amazingly um, vigorous. Um, Let's talk about some of the questions that are coming up. One that you've been very much involved in is question two. Explain what it is and, and how long and torturous ah, this road has been to right. travel on. And then for your, for your viewers, I mean, I think that people, there's a lot of questions and a lot of, and I know you're gonna bring up on say question three, which is ranked choice voting. Uh, we were able to get on the, uh, a ballot question regarding uh, voter ID. But, but I, I, thank you for asking about my question too. Um, question number two on the ballot is a question regarding changing the language in our Constitution regarding medical disabilities and, the, and the, our state's responsibility for it. It doesn't change how a responsibility is or where the responsibility lies. It changes the language of what, how we identify a disability. And it was brought to me um, by a speech pathologist out of Fallon, a constituent, which many bills are brought forward by constituents. Sure. Um, and he reached out to me and he said, did you know that in the Nevada Constitution, we still have the words deaf and dumb? The, this man had suffered a hearing loss. His father wa was hearing impair impaired and ended up working for Boeing and very successful for them. He said, you know, I was, teach I was working with my students and we looked at the Constitution and how we address these issues, and that language is still in there, insane asylums, all those kind of terminology. And he said, that should be updated, it should be changed. Um, and so it takes, to change our Constitution, it's a good thing, it takes a lot of effort and work to change the Nevada Constitution. What it requires is for you to submit a bill that then passes through the ho both houses it has to be passed through both houses and then has to come back the next session, pass with the same exact language through both houses again, and then of course be signed by the governor at the time. When I brought forward the bill initially, which was two sessions ago, it, people were literally crying during the testimony on how important it is to update this language. 
Um, and but all members of the HHS Health and Human Services Committee, they all wanted to be co-sponsors of it afterwards. It passed through both houses unanimously and then we had to bring it back in the same process again where you had to have testimony on why we needed to change the Constitution and what does this mean. And, and again, it's something that is a hard laborious process, but it should be. We shouldn't take light changing our Constitution lightly. As a matter of fact, when you read the pros and cons of this, when you have your information on these questions, it'll say, well, change the Constitution is something we should take seriously. In Nevada, as many of your viewers probably already know, some may not, they are, um, our legislative process is very laborious. We only meet every other year for 120 days. So to get anything changed, it takes years in the process. So it t has taken five years to finally get this on, on our ballot. So I hope folks will support question two. Uh, what were the objections? Again, the only objections across the board was opening the Constitution to a change. And so people take that seriously, I respect that. But again, the process is very laborious, lots of debate, lots of review. Um, and so one of the things that I, I always look at when I put a bill in is the unintended consequences. There were no unintended consequences of this other than updating what we should have done a long time ago. You know, it's, it's interesting because we, you know, we are able to change the Constitution, obviously, in this state. Um, but when you look at the United States Supreme Court, um, there are several judges, justices um, who are originalists and they want to hew strictly to the Constitution as it was originally written. How do you view that when you're looking at updating our Constitution to be in the modern era? Uh, because things do change. Things do change, and that's why we have amendments to our Constitution, right? And we've done that through a very strict process that we can amend our federal Constitution by, you know, the First Amendment, Second Amendment, all of the process. So even our forefathers recognized there will be times where we needed to update things, but they also made it very difficult to do. And so there's a process. We follow that process um, through our amendments to our Constitution, which have passed, and then there's strict vigorous review on those and so everybody will get a say in that let's take a break we'll come back we have another question i want to bring up right after this timeout. they want us to believe we only have two options that's just not working anymore i've never been a follower i'm a businessman and entrepreneur i'm ready to forge a new path to secure our future one that keeps northern nevada free fair and wild a path that means freedom for all, including affordable housing. I'm Greg Kidd, and I approve this message because I'm not from either political party. I'm for Nevada. Come one, come all. It's the $125,000 carnival of cash and prizes at Tamarack Casino. Get in on the fun with cash and free play prize drawings every Thursday and Saturday, including winners of up to $1,000 and a top prize of $5,000 guaranteed each week. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Dr. Robin Titus. She's a state senator uh, from District 17. Um, so, rank choice, question three. Your thoughts, please, before I jump in. Well, I think rank choice is bad for, ne for Nevada, and here's why. Because what will happen is the people, the real choice of the person really wanting to be elected may not be the person that gets elected at all. We in Nevada have probably one of the easiest abilities for people to vote across party lines. You can go and register as a Republican the day of the election and vote. Um, in many districts, in my district, it is a strong Republican district, more than 20% Republican. 
So people say, well, I don't have an option because we have closed voters in the primary. So that, in other words, you have to be a registered Republican to vote in the primary. You have to be a registered de Democrat to vote in their primary. So for you to have a voice in my district, you have to go and register as a Republican if you want to have a voice in the primary. Many people do, and then you can go right back out and go back and register as a Democrat if you want to. So to say that people are restricted in their options is just not accurate. What will happen with ranked choice voting, the way that it all goes, it's more like a, almost a word salad where you throw a bunch of numbers out there. People will get your, who's your first, second, and third, or fourth choice, and then as they do- And fifth. And fifth, and then as they do that, the person that may have been your fifth choice, if, that, that's, if that's everybody's fifth choice, could be on the ballot as the number one person on the ballot, just based on those numbers. And that's truly not what I think people want. People want to make sure their voice is being heard, and I think this is going to be just the opposite. My, my, I, I, I agree with you in so many different ways. Um, my thought is, you know, open primaries uh, would make more sense to me if you were looking to make a change because that's simple and easy to understand. Um, you know, people are constantly complaining about, um, you know, how difficult it is uh, to get people to register, how difficult it is to get people to vote. Now, of course, we've, we've taken care of the registration through the DMV at this point, but um, getting people to actually go out and vote. I was talking to somebody in the Hispanic community the other day and talking about, you know, their potential power, and it was like, yes, but we gotta get them to vote. So we haven't gotten over that hurdle yet. Now we're presenting what at least appears on the surface to be a complex issue. I know Dr. Cosgrove is gonna say, no, it's not difficult at all. We've got a couple of states already doing this, including Alaska. But it just seems like anything that makes it harder for people to vote doesn't seem like a good plan to me. So, so I, would, I would say that um, using, if you're gonna use Alaska as an example, there's a ballot measures to remove that because in, a lot of Alaskans thought it was a disaster for them. People didn't understand what was, what was happening in that process. So although I appreciate her opinion, as a matter of fact, she and I agree on one of my other uh, uh, bills that I put in about electing of judges and some time we should talk about that because she and I are on the same page on that one. My concern, again, is that people won't understand the process. And again, th it's not going to get more people to vote. We know that through voter registration at the DMV, um, those folks that were registered there do not vote for the most part. There's a significant percent that did not vote. I'm working uh, with the Secretary of State and the county clerks to actually get me some actu actual figures on that because it, it skewed the voter turnout, frankly, because you have now all these registered voters that at a cost that never intended to vote and you're, you're mailing them these ballots and they're not gonna return them. So part of that is we, we allow them to register there. We want them to vote. We want that community voter engagement, but there's people who just aren't willing and nor wanting to do that. So we want those informed voters to continue to participate. And now we've kind of diluted all of that. And, and again, excuse the numbers. So I don't think ranked choice voting is going to solve the issue of people wanting to vote. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite. All right, so, so should it be that um, we as a state should do more of a publicity campaign to let people know, you know, you don't need ranked choice voting. Uh, you don't even need open primaries. You can just go change your registration on that day. Now, of course, the only issue here is with mail-in balloting, you can't do that, right? Right, but you can still vote the day of registration if you don't have the mail ballot. So you can still go change your party, you can vote provisional ballot that day and have that happen. So for, again, Sam, I think that we all want our voters to be informed um, and we want them to make educated choices. It's our job, my job as an elected official to make sure that we reach out to the voters. We want them engaged in the process, whether it was a single issue that you're passionate about or whether it's all the issues or whether you just happen to like the smile of the candidate, you know, that's okay, but go vote. And so I think it's our job to, to make sure, and that's where I'm focusing on, is making sure that we cannot control what's happening out there in the national politics. But in Nevada, we have a lot of control on, on these candidates that we're trying to get elected and get people to show up to vote for that. So I'm telling the candidates that I'm supporting, please make sure the people are there in that, fill out the ballot, because they're passionate about you. Get your name out there. Make sure that they're voting 
for you. And it can be that personal in the state like Nevada. You, you get to meet your candidates. You get to know who represents you. One of the things that really wasn't discussed that much at the time was that after the Biden debate uh, with uh, former President Trump, that the concern really behind the scenes was that there were just going to be Democrats who stayed home, that they weren't going to go out and vote for, for Joe Biden. Do, do you agree that, that that was a bigger concern for the Democrats? Uh, was people just not coming out and voting? Because we, we two, you, know, you look at 2014 here in Nevada. Right, right. We, act, uh, frankly, I hope people help the Democrats stay home because um, we need a strong, and I hope my Republican Party candidates listening and p people who register Republican, nonpartisans, and Democrats who care about the future of this state show up and vote for the Republican candidates. So I'm hoping that, I, I think there was going to be apathy beforehand. I think the Democrat Party is working hard to bring forward their candidates. I was part of the 2014 election cycle. I know they stayed home, the Democrats did. Um, whether they do or not this time, I want all voters to vote. I, I don't care what party you belong to. I think people should vote. I think it's important. I think it's your responsibility to vote. I agree with you and 100%. So, but I hope you vote for our Republican candidates. Um, and you know, around the world, people die to have the opportunity right. to vote. And so when so many people in this country don't vote, our voting numbers, especially in off-year elections, are terrible. It is. And, um, and so, yes, I do hope that people vote. Let's take another break. We'll come back. We've got a few more questions for you. We'll be right back after this time out. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Dr. Robin Titus. She's the state senator from District 17. Um, we were talking in the break there about something that I know and you know, but the public doesn't really know, which is both on a federal level and a state level, more things get done than people would imagine, correct? Absolutely. I, I, th I think I, I, of course, can speak to the to state level and some of the bills that we actually work on, that we work literally both sides work on. We're working now out of session, putting bills forward that, we, that will f help all Nevadans. And so um, I think people don't recognize how much actually does get done. Um, there's a lot of extreme measures, both sides, 
never will get a hearing. We call them statement bills more than actually a bill that's going to change something. But through the interim uh, committees and um, when we're not in session, I'm working on a GME graduate medical education bill with Senator Bazina, a uh, Democrat, and she and I worked closely to get this bill passed for access to health care. I don't care what side of the table or the aisle you're on, we all want more access to health care. So having that cooperative things are the ones that get passed. The, the best bills are passed when you sit down at the table and you have all parties engaged and you have a discussion about what's best for Nevada, not what's best for anyone's individual agenda. And I think I hope that most of us um, in, in Carson City really are trying to do things that solve Nevada issues. And I, I think it's staying home and working here in Nevada, we can get, actually get th things done. So I, I want the viewers to know that they may be very discouraged on national politics level, they may be discouraged on what they see in the news, but the reality is that Nevadans need you to show up. It does make a difference in Carson City. It, you know, best policies are mo closest to the people. Uh, we will respond to you, and we do try to get things done. And so there's there's hope, uh, and but it engages all your all your participants and all your viewers. Um, yes, and uh, and I think it's a really important thing that people understand that the and it's funny, you know, you 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 flip from one channel to the other on a national basis, and you see the same issues coming up. It's as though they are completely ignoring that there are 535 people in the Congress who are working on things, and lots of things are getting done. Um, there are just a few major issues that, that become the focal point, but that's not really the, the work that gets right. done every day. Things do move forward. We do get things done. And I hope that your viewers will understand the importance of voting in November um, and uh, making sure your voice is heard. And, and it's critical as I think it's a responsibility as a Nevada citizen to please vote. As a citizen of the United States, right? look at those people right. trying to get into the country Begging who would love the part. opportunity just to be here, let right. alone vote. I always appreciate you coming in. Thank you, sir. It's a long drive for you, so thank you. Early. <laughs> now, we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real. It's growing. And it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day on various platforms, including television, radio, our website, audio and video podcasts, YouTube. If you want to find the show, you can find it pretty darn easily. And we cover politics, business, health, and education. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.